our scripture for what we'll be talking about today is found in Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah 58 from verse 5 to 12, Isaiah 58 from verse 5 to 12. I'm going to read the scripture first and then we'll pray. Is it a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush? Is this um, New King James? Can I have please New King James? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. And to spread out sackcloth and ashes, would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not a fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you may break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. As you call unto the Lord today, even this week, may the Lord answer us in Jesus' name. He said, you shall cry, and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your face, the pointing of the finger, and the speaking wicked and speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord will guide you continually. Can we declare that the Lord will guide me continually? Let's say that again. The Lord will guide me continually in this new year 2022. In Jesus' name. And it says, Satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up the foundation, raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of streets to dwelling. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Let us bow down our head as we pray. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you, O God, for this beautiful day. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, as we go into your word, let the entrance of your word bring light to us this morning. Lord, strengthen us by your word. Bring encouragement to our soul. Lord, for those who may be sick in their body, even as we share your word this morning, let healing flow through their bodies in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I ask, O oh God, for utterance. Holy Spirit, implant your word in our hearts this morning. And let us catch a revelation of what you want us to know about this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 The title of today's message, actually, uh, you remember during the watch now we started a message. I won't continue that today. I just want to prepare us for this fasting. So the title of today's message is called Prayer and Fasting. Our key to fruitfulness. Prayer and fasting. Our keys to fruitfulness. Based on God's word, God has made provision for all his children. You are not meant to fail. You are not meant to live a life that is a life of failure, a non successful life. In fact, everything to pertain to life and godliness, potentially God has made provision for that need, you know, be it your physical need, be it spiritual need, be it material need, God has made provision for every child and every child of his, he has made provision for us. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, he says, he has by, I mean, as his divine power, this is talking about God, has given to us, his children, all things. Can we say all things? All things. It says all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who call us by glory and virtue. You see, God has potentially, he's made preparation, he's made 
a provision for you and I to excel, to succeed in our spiritual journey, in our walk with God, with Him, in, in even in this life, our career. Do you know that God has a plan for your career? He has a plan for your family. He has a plan for your business. You see, but a lot of times what happens is that we chase, we devise our own plan without consulting with Him. And that is why sometimes we don't do well. But when we follow God's plans, it is guaranteed. And we do what He says we should do. It's guaranteed. Success is guaranteed. Say Amen. But you see, there are things we have to do in order to enter into all God has for us. Remember, God has given us everything that pertains to life. But you see, there are things that trigger those promises that makes them come to pass in our life. That's what Bible says in James 1.22, that James 1.22 said, But be doers of the world, not just hearers deceiving ourselves. So there's always something we have to do to trigger those promises. Even though God has given us those things, there are things we have to do. Do you know that salvation is free for all? But the truth is that there's something you have to do not to earn the salvation. God, it, it is the death, the death by the resurrection of Jesus Christ that has given us the provision for our salvation. But the truth is that to receive that salvation, you have to repent of your sins. If one receives Christ and they continue to live the way they are living, it's an evidence that they're not saved. Bible says in Acts 3.19, Acts 3.19, you know, it, it is a difference between obviously falling into sin but living in sin. Say, so repent therefore and be converted. There can't be conversion without repentance, you know. Say, so repent therefore and be converted so that your sins may be blotted out, so that in times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So what this scripture is saying is that before conversion, before you can be converted in your heart before God, there has to be repentance. Say amen. So what we're saying here is that there's always something we have to do, you know, to, to uh, not to end God's love, not to end his salvation, but to trigger those things that God has prepared for those who love him. Peter said in Acts 2 38, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Bible said that Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, what I'm saying here is that there's always a part we have to play, a role we have to play. Not to, I have to say this cautiously, I'm not saying that we need to earn our salvation, but God demands, you know, certain things. You know, God has given us a plan for prosperity. He doesn't want his children to live in poverty. But let me tell you, if you don't obey God in little things like honoring him with our time and giving to him, it's impossible. The person will struggle. But does it mean that God hasn't provided for that person? God has provided, but we're disobeying him in honoring him with our tithe and offering. May you receive grace today to honor God in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. So, prayer and fasting are spiritual responsibilities that helps us to secure our glorious destiny in Christ. Prayer and fasting are spiritual responsibility that helps us to secure our glorious destiny in Christ. It's not an option. It's not whether I feel like it or I don't. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 5, Matthew 6 5, he said, and when you pray, he didn't say if you pray. He said when you pray, meaning that you have to pray. Prayer is important. And even in verse 17, Matthew 6, 17, Matthew 6, 17, he said, but you, when you fast, when, he didn't say if you fast, you know. And there was a time, the some of the disciples of John, they were asking that, look, uh, we fast all the time, you know, John the Baptist, they were saying t- t- to Jesus, we fast, but we noticed that your disciples, <laughs> you, you guys are not fasting. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 14, Matthew 9, 14 to 15, then Jesus said to them, there was something Jesus, the disciples of John said to him, why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples did not fast, do not fast? And Jesus said, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn, as long as the bridegroom is with them, but the day will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. What Jesus was saying was that his disciples were not fasting because they were with him at the time, 
But when it goes away, which is now, we will fast. And where is disciple? So these are the days where the days where Jesus has prescribed fasting, fasting for his disciples and for all his children. Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, twice actually. Nehemiah fasted for 21 days. Daniel fasted for 21 days. Jesus, obviously, our master, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, uh, fasting sometimes is not easy because your stomach is always, you know, wanting to have food. But the truth is that any child of God must be able to deny, you know, the, 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 the pleasure of, of food for a season and to to, to, to link up and to, to, to enhance your spiritual life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Do you know that uh, 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 um, there are benefits? I just want to quickly mention today about six benefits. What fasting does? By the way, what is fasting? Fasting is abstinence from food for spiritual purposes. You know, abstaining from food for spiritual purposes purposes. Amen? Amen? Okay. So let's remember fasting is not a religious body but a spiritual platform that establishes profitable, triumphant living. There's something about fasting. It's actually for me it's, 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 it's a mystery that you deny yourself food for a few hours, you know and something begins to happen in your spiritual life. You, you get better connection with God and there's so many other things. We're going, to, we're going to look at some of the benefits. Number one, what does fasting enables you or what are the benefits? Number one, write this down. Write this down so that you don't forget. Number one, it empowers you. It empowers you. It gives you spiritual power. I remember uh, uh, one book I read about there was a man who, 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 who went on a long fast. I can't remember how long the fast was. He was a pastor, and they called him to come and pray for this man who suddenly has gone mad. As soon as he entered the room where the man was, he didn't even see anything. This man began to manifest. He said, why are you here? What are you doing here? You know, the, the, the demon started just manifesting immediately. The man hasn't even said anything. You know, when we live a fasted life, you, 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 without a doubt, God anoints you. You are empowered spiritually. Say empowered. empowered. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Luke chapter 4 verse 14. Luke chapter 4 verse 14. This was after Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And news of him went out throughout all the surrounding regions. Praise the Lord. Fasting is about ne our, your next level of empowerment, which enhances your next level of spiritual authority. When we fast and we do it properly, what happens is that you hear God better, you know, because what you're doing is you're subjecting, you're putting your flesh under, you know, a human being. When you look at a human being, we're spirit beings. I always say this, we live in the body, we have a soul, okay? So when I'm looking at you, what I'm looking at is the house you live in. That is not you. You are not the house. The real you is your spirit and your soul. And you live in the body. They are within you. When somebody passes away, the body goes back to dust. But the spirit and soul lives forever. Spirit and soul never dies. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your intellect. When you're fasting, you're subjecting the noise of your flesh, and you are more in tune with what God is. See, remember, God is spirit. And Bible says, those that are worshiping, He's looking for those that are worshiping in spirit and in truth. When we eat all the time, we live, you know, you wake up before even breakfast, you've been eating so many days, <laughs> then you have breakfast, then before lunch, you have brunch. You say, okay, let me see something to eat before lunch. If we're doing that every day, it's difficult to grow spiritually. There are times we need to subject. This body and put it down. There was a man in the Bible by the name Esau. He had a brother to a brother called Jacob. And he came back home one day and he was so hungry. He was a senior brother. 
And then the, 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 he told his brother, the brother just prepared this bowl of soup or porridge or whatever. And he said, can I have out of that porridge or soup? And the, the brother who is a very mischievous person. You see, in those days in Israel, the firstborn always has a more, uh, the double blessings of the father. He, he has a better inheritance. You know, when you're the first birth, firstborn, you have a bigger inheritance. And the younger brother said, you know what? I will give you this soup, but give me your inheritance. He just said it playfully. And Esau said, who cares about the inheritance? I mean, just give me that soup. I don't care. I give it to you. You see, the words you declare, you can live. You can, you can. Bible says that, you know, the, 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 you know, we need to watch what we say. There's power of life and death in what we say. Do you know that his brother became more successful, bigger than him? And he realized what he had done. But Bible says that it was too late for him. It will never be too late for you in Jesus' name. What we're saying is that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16, Hebrews 12, 16, Hebrews 12, 16, let there be any for the kids of proof of profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. He gave up his birthright just because of food. You know, there are times, even as God's children, if we're not careful, just eating every day, no, no, no fast, even if it's once a month, even if it's when we have corporate fasting here, engage with it. You build up your spirit, man. Say amen. So fasting empowers a believer. It enhances your spiritual authority. Because, you know, they said in the kingdom of darkness, <laughs> people who, 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 who are into some serious, you know, uh, uh, witchcraft and stuff, they can look at a believer and say, this one, you know, every believer, God has got a seal of protection and there's a light on them. They say in the spirit, they can see who is a believer. But they say, for somebody who is a believer, who lives a fasted life, and who is a very prayerful person, they can tell that, ah, we can't go near this one. <laughs> this one is always fasting, always praying. I'm not saying that you don't eat, but even if it's once a week, even if it's when the church, you know, you know, calls for fasting, engage with it, because it builds your spirit, man. Amen? A lot of things we struggle with, what happens is that there's no enough spiritual strength to say no. And one of the ways we can develop spiritual strength is through fasting. Sometimes, it, it, obviously we can't make such a thing in law. What we're saying is that even if it's once a week, skip your brain on it, take a day a week, and say, today, God, it's, it's real, you. I want to hear from you. Once a week, fast from morning, even if it is 3 p.m. or something, you realize that you just you, you begin to gain spiritual strength. May the Lord give you an eye great to fast in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. There was a time the disciples, somebody came to Jesus, to the disciples, and said, Our our, our son is he's got epilepsy and he, he keeps falling into the fire. There are some diseases, there are some illnesses, it's demonic, it's not just natural. And they brought that person. To the disciples and they couldn't cast out they couldn't heal the person because jesus had remembered jesus empowered the disciples to heal the sick to cast out the demons from people in matthew chapter 17 matthew 17 14 to 18 matthew 17 14 when they had come to the month a man came out with kneeling down to him saying listen when they had come to uh uh, uh saying next bar lord have mercy on my son for his epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered us, Oh, faithless and power generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall you be I'll be with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. Meaning that that particular epilepsy was a result of a demon. It's not natural, it's just a demon that's causing, you know, that illness. And it came out of him. And the child was cured for that very hour. Look at verse 21 for me. So the disciples then went to Jesus. They said, Jesus, Lord, how come we couldn't do this? And Jesus said, this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. So there are certain things, the level of healing grace that only comes through prayer and fasting. May you receive that grace today in Jesus' name. So what we're saying here is that when we fast, 
It enhances our spiritual strength. You can say no to silent things. Say amen. amen. So one of the, the first benefits is that it empowers your spirit. Your, your spirit becomes stronger. You remember the real you is not your flesh. It's not your body. It's your spirit and your soul. The food for your soul is the word of God. And, but when you fast, what happens is that your spirit becomes sharp. You can hear God better. You can connect with God. And you know you can say no to certain things. So fasting is very good for every child of God. It's not only pastor that's supposed to fast. Even student, take a day, week, even in the university, and say, on Wednesday, I'm going to skip my breakfast. I will eat at even 1 p.m., 3 p.m., or whatever. And during that fast, be careful. It's not to be fasting and start watching, you know, <laughs> some football games or start doing different things. Because when we're fasting, what we're doing is that. You know, in the old times, when people fast, what they do, they put ashes on their head. They don't, they, they don't, they don't engage in all the normal pleasure they engage in. You deny yourself those things, and God will empower you. Say Amen. amen. So the fourth benefit is that it empowers us as believers. Number two, it releases the oppressed and break yokes. It releases the oppressed from bondage and break yokes. In Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, verse six. Our scripture text that we read, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, says, Is this not the fact that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy bodies, and to lose the oppressed, to go free, and that to break every yoke? When we fast, fasting is a platform for losing bonds of, bonds of wickedness. There's a lot of wickedness in this world. There's spiritual wickedness that you don't see with your naked eye. There are heavy burdens. Sometimes people wake up, they just, it's like the whole life, the whole world is put on their head. They just feel so burdened. There are times, it is yoke. What? What? A yoke. A yoke is pretty much something that just slows you down. You know, it slows your walk with God. It could be addictive behaviors. It could be stuff that you don't want to do them, but you find yourself doing them. Any yoke is basically anything that slows you down. You see, in those days, in the old times, the times of Jesus, they used to have animals. You see, remember there were no cars. They used to have an animal. They would yoke them together by putting like a wood, the wooden thing on their necks. You know, they, they would put them together, then they would pile them with different stuff. Maybe they want to go on a journey and they want to carry a lot of stuff. So they yoked those animals together. But the animals, because they yoke them together, they can't move at their normal speed. They are so slow. So yoke is something that slows you down, that slows your spiritual life down, that slows you down from, you know, you know, engaging with God in a, in a much better way. It could be addictive behavior. It could even be gluttony. Maybe you like food so much that before you <laughs> wake up, <laughs> you already thought of so many things you're going to eat that day. Instead of eating three square meals, maybe your average meal is like five square meals a day. Some people do that. It could be, I'm telling you, there's no way one can attain the level of spirituality God wants us to attain if we love food to the extent that we can't even fast. So remember, what we're saying here, one of the blessings is that when we fast, you know, Yokes are broken. You suddenly realize that those things that you are struggling with, it is easier to say no to those things. Say amen. amen. It could be anything choking your life. There are things we don't want to do. Paul said, the things I don't want to do is what I end up doing. Even Apostle Paul struggled in a particular area. He didn't measure what he was. So it could be anything choking your life. You know, there are spirits of defilement that wants to disconnect a child of God from God. You see, God is so holy. So what the, what the enemy does is that he looks at your life, he tries to entice you to start doing things, you know, that repeatedly. And without repentance, without stopping those things, it's impossible to fully engage with God. Because God is holy. He's not going to compromise on sin. He's a merciful God. When we truly repent, obviously he cleanses us and we move on. But what we're saying is that there are demonic spirits of defilement that wants to choke somebody's life, that they pray very well today, then the next day they just put some images in their mind or tell them go to this side. And you know, and these days without the smartphone and there are a lot of things that you know people can be 
exposed to. But today, may the Lord release anyone in, from that bondage in Jesus' name. So what we're saying is that in these 21 days of fasting and prayer, every yoke of bondage in your life will be broken in Jesus' name. Remember, yokes are things that slows you, that slows your spiritual work. And you can't, you see, God wants us to, there are seasons in our life that, you know, God wants to take you to another level. He just wants to remain. You know, if a child is growing, at the age of five, you expect the child to be doing some things. At the age of 10, you expect them to be doing some things. At the age of 15, you expect them to be. So if a child at 15, this, all, all they know is, is that they are still at the level of a primary school child. You know, something is wrong. Do you understand? So even with God, he expects us to grow spiritually. And we can't grow without engaging in the uh, 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 activity of prayer and fasting. So what happens is that when there are yokes in our life, fasting just helps us to break those things up. You realize that you can say no to this thing. Maybe there are unhealthy relationships around you. You know that this particular relationship is just not helping me spiritually. And God has been telling you, break off those relationships. I remember somebody sharing the testimony that God said, you need to clean up your life and I'm going to just bless you. And then, you know, and we know what happened. What I'm saying here is that there are certain things that chokes our life. And when we submit to God's will through fasting, those things are easy to drop off. Say amen. You will realize that, in fact, I can say no to these things. But when we're not fasting, Jesus said some things don't drop off except through prayer and fasting. So we can be praying, 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 but when we need to engage, you know, fasting with it as well. And then it just empowers you. You can say no to those things. May you receive grace today in Jesus' name. I had a testimony of a gentleman who was addicted to drugs for 25 years. This man has smoked everything from serious, I'm talking about heavy drugs. He got to a state that there was, he, he, he wanted to actually stop. It, it messed up his life. He sold all his days and it was so bad. And this guy, he, he joined a particular church that I know. And, uh, he, you know, he happened to be in January when they were doing 21 day fast. So this guy went into 21 day fast. By the end of that 21, he said, God, I am fed up of this. I don't want to do this thing anymore. I'm fed up of it. Help me. After 21 days, this guy had no more desire for drugs anymore. Everything had dropped off. Can you see the power of fasting? Amen. Amen. This is true life story. What I'm saying here is that he said, I'm, I'm talking about this happened even a few years ago, not recently, so that we might be thinking, oh, maybe he's going to relax. The desire just dropped off. God just delivered him and set him free. So there are certain things that comes with fasting. I want to encourage our young people as well. Let's not just as we only my, our parents or pastors that fast. No. If you're an adult and you're a believer, you need to fast, even if it's once a week. You know, but I'm talking about our 21 days fast now. Every one of us will need to engage in it. Say amen. amen. Number three, what is the benefit of fasting? Access to revelation. Number three, access to revelation of the word of God. In Isaiah 58 verse 8, Isaiah 58 verse 8, say then, he's talking about fasting, and he said then, your light will break forth like the morning. When Bible talks about light in the Bible, it's about his revelation. You know, God reveals the healing truths of his word to you. Say, then your light shall break forth, your healing shall spring forth, your righteousness shall go before the glory of you shall be your real God. What we're saying here is that you see, God says something in Hosea 4. He said, Hosea 4, he said, My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Where you are today is, is a summation of what you know about life. There are secret things, there are revealed things. God, you see, what you are praying for passionately, there is what you can do to get you to that level. And it's called revelation. God can give you a dream and give you, uh, uh, like Joseph in the Bible, God gave him a dream, showed him a dream. He saw his brother, even his prayers bound down to him. So what we need is revelation through the power of the Holy Spirit. God has your, the blueprint of your life in his hands. 
when you're going to be, who you're going to marry, you know, all those things. God has it in his hand. But a lot of time we don't seek him enough. When we seek him, he gives us a revelation. He opens your mind. It will tell you, you know, don't go that direction. Go this direction. Do this career, you know. So what we're saying is that when we fast, it's the time that God begins to reveal his plans for your life. Say amen. amen. Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans. That thought, another person said, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of you, to give you a hope and a future. God has a plan for your life and we need revelation from the Holy Spirit as to which direction it is we should go with our lives and what to do in any given situation. Say Amen. Those revelations don't come just by, you know, don't get me wrong, you can be in the shower, you can just be, you know, chilling out and God will give you that revelation. But the truth is that when you when you engage in a fast, a lot of time, God will just open your eyes. I remember many years ago, some years ago, before, just before, I think the church, just, just before the church started, I was seeking God about this church. And all of a sudden, God just spoke to my heart. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Isaiah 2, verse 2 to 3, where it says, It shall come to pass in the letter that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountain, shall be exalted above the hill. All nations, when I got to that all nations, God just told me, He said, The church, the church you are about to start, it's going to be a church of all nations. We see people from different, right from the beginning of this ministry, we've always seen people from different nations, you know, just coming in. And I know that even this prophetic word will come to pass in Jesus' name. What we're saying here is that as soon as God spoke to me, I said, God confirmed the word. I closed my Bible, I opened it again. It went to another scripture that said exactly the same thing. What we're saying here is that God is a faithful God. Say, those that seek me, if you seek me, you will find me. If you search for me with all your heart. Say, Amen. Amen. May nothing distract your attention during this fast in Jesus' name. Amen. And a lot of times we don't seek him enough. You know, we, we, we're fasting and we just, you know, or, or, or during fast we're praying and uh, your phone rings. Hello. <laughs> I am praying. Let me call you back and pray. <laughs> you know, we need to engage. We need to engage. Let's, the, the distraction is sometimes what takes our mind of things. And sometimes when we're distracted, we can't really fully receive from God. You know, when we want to pray, let's get into that mode. Shut down the phone, put the phone to one side. Not that we're praying, we're, you know, we're, we're all to that so we're just checking the phone. We can't do that. You know, we need to be more focused. Say amen. What are the benefits of fast number four? Speedy restoration of our health. Speedy restoration of our health. Isaiah chapter 15, verse 8. Isaiah 58, 8. God is promised, promised us in His Word. Isaiah 58, 8. He said, Then your life will bring forth His revelation. The lesson is that your healing shall spring forth speedily. Speedily. Sometimes you are going through some affliction on your health or whatever. Just declare fast. You know. Even as we're fasting now, I want to trust God that anyone who's seeking and with the Lord will turn that thing around in Jesus' name. Do you know that most of the sickness Jesus healed, they were oppressions from the devil. It was cut. When his Peter's mother in law, they said he had a fever, and Jesus went there. He didn't just say, Oh, I pray that you are healed. Bible says he laid his hands on her and casted out something, and the woman became whole immediately. Sometimes most sick, some, most sicknesses they just demonic infestation of that body. So what we're saying is that when we begin to when we fast, you know, Bible says that our health will be restored speedily. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Say Amen. In Acts chapter ten, verse thirty-eight, Acts ten thirty-eight, Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. You remember when? You fast, you are endued with power. He said, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. It was healing those who were oppressed by the devil. Can you see what I'm trying to bring out there? So, sickness mostly is oppression by the devil. Healing all who are oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. 
One way say, even though there's maybe some psychological reason why somebody might be ill and stop, but a lot of time it is demonic. And Jesus will just cast out that spirit. There was a guy that was deaf and dumb. And Bible says he just went to the man and said, Deaf and dumb spirit, leave him now, lose him and let him go. And the man started hearing. He didn't prescribe parastamol or, or some antibiotics. No, it was a spirit. You know, a woman was bent down and she was just walking like him. And Jesus saw her. Say, woman, thou art loose from your meat in, in, uh, 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 in family. And the woman back just went like that. It was a demon that made the woman to be like that. So what we're saying is that speedy restoration of our health, when we begin to engage in passionate fasting, our health is fully restored. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number five. What is the benefit? And that benefit, which we see, we see all of it in that Isaiah 15. Benefit of fasting. God answers prayers speedily. God answers prayers speedily. Isaiah 58, verse 9. Isaiah 58, verse 9. Remember, he's talking about those that fast. Then he said, Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. Amen. Amen. Say, You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. What we're saying here is that. Fasting kind of it, 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 it speeds up our prayer. Maybe that delay, maybe God just wants you to spend time during these 21 days of prayer, and the, the Lord will surely come through for you in Jesus' name. In Isaiah 65 24, Isaiah 65 24, look at what God says, shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Hmm. So, what we're saying here is that when we engage the identity of fasting and we pray, God answers prayers speedily. I want to also encourage us when we're praying. Do you know that you can pray and then finish praying? You've even forgotten what you prayed about because you are praying and you are sleeping. It's very easy. Let me tell you one of the keys, the ways that the enemy kind of slows down or is trying to attack Christians. It's during prayer time. It will just make you feel sleepy. You've, you're the prayer line. You are praying and you slept off. And by the time you are thinking, what have I actually prayed about? What prayer that achieves result is heartfelt prayer that touches your heart. Say amen. Heartfelt prayer. You know, prayer that touches your heart. Amen. You know, Bible talks about the fervent prayer of a righteous man. He avails much. It makes tremendous power available. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call unto me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you have not known. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. So remember, I just want to encourage us that let us engage with this fasting. It's, it's so good. The number six benefit of prayer and fasting is access to divine guidance. Access to divine guidance. Isaiah 58, verse 11, verse 11, Isaiah 58, look at what it says. Isaiah 58, verse 11, say the Lord, remember he's talking about fasting, then he said, then the Lord will guide you continually. I want the Lord to guide me in the every step I take. Say amen. You know, a lot of times we make our own decisions and choices, but when the Lord is the one guiding you, it is safe. He said the Lord will guide you continuously. And will satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. It shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose water do not fill. I don't know about it. We all need guidance from God. We need direction in order to make it in this life. Life is a journey. You don't just choose to do anything the way you want. It's best to just receive guidance from God. And when God has planted you in a place, don't put yourself and say, oh, maybe, be, you know, let God lead you. I've always shared this story, how God just planted me, you know, in, a, in, in our mother church years ago. And how, I mean, it, when, when I look back, I could easily have missed it, you know. But it, that, that's why it's very important to be steadfast, to be diligent, even wherever God plants us. So when you, God is guiding you, is when, when you fast, you have access to divine guidance. You know, may you never suffer confusion anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. From now, specific direction, clear directly from the Lord with your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. 
when the Lord leads you, you can't make mistakes. You cannot make mistakes. You know, in these 21 days of prayer and fasting, you will not miss God's direction in Jesus' name. Do you know that this year, 2022, there are specific things God wants you to do. There are things people you want to hook you up with. There are, there are, there are, there, 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 there is promotion. There's so many things. And if when you fast, what happens is that particularly this first 21 days, what happens is that you set yourself up for success. God begin to guide you. Are you with me? Bible says in Isaiah 30, 21, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. It says, Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. There's always a way. Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man. The end of this destruction. You won't walk that one in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the one you walk. Say, God will say to you, This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand, whenever you turn to the left. So you will hear the voice behind you saying, This is the way. God wants to speak to you, He wants to direct your life. Sometimes we're too impatient. Let's during this fasting. May you hear God clearly concerning every issue of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm just going to round up by saying that well, I just want to quickly look at some attitudes to adopt while fasting. Um, number one, very this is no brainer. Let's confess and forsake all our sins. If we're fasting and we're living in sin, I mean, we're just wasting our time. Remember, God is a holy God. You know, Bible God told Moses to tell the children of Israel in Exodus 19, 9 to 11. Exodus 19, 9 to 11. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in a thick blood, and the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. The next verse. And he says, Then the Lord said, Go to the people and consecrate them today, and tomorrow let them wash their clothes. That was in the Old Testament. They physically washed their clothes, but in the New Testament, it's talking about, you know, the Bible says we should cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the Spirit. Two ways is let's confess and forsake all sins. Number two, don't be offended in God. There are people that come to God and they're angry with God. That God, we haven't done it. I mean, if you're angry with God, who's going to answer your prayer? So don't be offended in God. Jesus said in Matthew eleven six, Matthew eleven six, blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Don't don't. God loves you. He cares about you. He's not the reason or the source of that problem. So he's the one that can bring it to pass. Amen. So don't be offended with God, please. Can I say that? Forgive God. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, <laughs> you can't be angry at God. It's not God. Okay, a lot of the issues, sometimes it's our own disobedience, sometimes the enemy, sometimes it's just the sovereignty of God. So, but don't be offended in God. There's no other alternative to God. Refuse to be offended in God. No one can justify himself before God. You know, adjust your positions because God is always right. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Number three. Engage your heart in seeking God. During these 21 days of prayer and fasting, let's engage our heart. Don't let us do it anyhow, you know. Fasting has no effect without prayer. Prayer gives value to fasting. You know, in Jeremiah 29, verse 12, Jeremiah 29, verse 12, he said, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Verse 30. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your hearts. God wants us to search for him with all our heart. And lastly, be specific with your request before God. Be specific. You know, right now, what are your expectations? A lot of times this day, I don't know, as good as the internet is, you know, sometimes, I, you know, I like, it's good to just write things down, you know. Somebody always says that the shortest pencil is, is better than the sharpest brain because the thing will always be there forever. You know? So it says here that we, when we search for him with all our heart, write down your request. What do you want God to do? Jesus saw a blind man and said, what can I do for you? 
demands that I may receive my sight. Don't assume. God knows what our issues are, but he wants us to ask him. Ask him. Write those things down. Lord, this year, number one, I need a wife, I need a husband. Number two, I need a job. Number three, I need promotion. I need to finish my studies with, you know, good grace, whatever. Just write those things down. Sometimes we don't write it down. We don't pray about it. We just leave it. So I want to encourage you, write those things down. Lord, I bring this towards your altar, and I just ask, oh God, you know, bring it before the Lord every time. And you realize, as God is answering them, you just be taking them off all the time. Amen. Amen. Even if you're reading it before, it doesn't matter. Write it down. Write those things. I have goals that this year, God, this is what I desire from you. And I know it's not impossible with you. Praise the Lord. So, remember, be specific with your request before God. And it always amazes me when Jesus will say, what do you want me to do for you? And he can see that the man is blind. He could see that the man is a leper. And the, the, man, the, the man at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years, the man started telling him story. That, uh, you know, I've been here, nobody to push me. He just said, rise up, take your bed and just go. He wants us to tell him what we want. Amen. So be specific with your request. Have at least three to five things. Write it down. This Lord, this is what I'm trusting you for this year. And as you go into this fast, that God help me to deal with this. Help me to break off my life. This thing that is slowing me down. This yoke, I don't want it anymore. Write it down. Say amen. amen. And lastly, well, just last, lastly, <laughs> as a church, we know that there are, God has given us different graces. Our normal fast, you know, it starts from morning, like 6 a.m. till about 5, 6 p.m. in the evening. But we know that sometimes people, uh, 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 maybe the nature of the job, or you don't have that grace. But we want to say that even if you can just do from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m., you know, and be consistent with it. And within that period, make sure you're praying, you know, find time to pray. Don't just fast through and you are not praying, you know. So what the normal one is from 9 so anytime from five, between five and six, you can break. But if you don't have that break, you can start at six and break at one o'clock. Amen. Amen. Particularly maybe, you know, for students or people who are engaging in very heavy stuff and that it's, you know, I mean, so what we're saying is that you can either break at one, three or five o'clock. Amen. But engage with it. And give me, do it, do, do it faithfully to the Lord. Or sometimes people might want to do Daniel's fast. Daniel, you know, Daniel fasted for 21 days, and his kind of fast was he was only eating vegetables, you know. And uh, <laughs> don't be like this brother. <laughs> he decided to go for Daniel's fast. You know, you know, potato is <laughs> it's vegetable. This guy went to boil some cereal like 10 pieces of big big potato. <laughs> went to, uh, went to uh, you know, get some nice finish and some prawns. And <laughs> it was so serious. <laughs> he would eat that for, for, for lunch, for breakfast. <laughs> the guy didn't even have any sign that he was fasting. You know, he would eat peas. <laughs> you know, it's, it's vegetable, in it? So, <laughs> it's peas. <laughs> There's potato, there's yam. You go and find some Ghana yams. You know those nice sweet yams? <laughs> I said, at least I am not eating meat. <laughs> look, let your motive be pure. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so Daniel fast is good as well. So look at it. It's, uh, Daniel fast, you can just take vegetables. vegetables. Daniel fasted for 21 days, only eating vegetables, you know, and fruits and stuff like that. And uh, you can eat that any time, you know. But uh, but there's something about just abstaining from food for a season. Amen. It empowers you. You know, you can, I mean, I, I, in fact, this is real. There's, some, there's a link between when you genuinely fast. In fact, when you appear, the devil knows. Uh, in fact, let me just stay away from this guy. <laughs> there's something about him. There's a glow in your life. Even you even look better. Even our doctors told us that uh, when we fast, when we... <laughs> When we fast for some time, you know, our, our health 
is, is a lot better. Sometimes just to be eating every day, you know, you eat this every day, like six times a day. Sometimes give that stomach a break a little bit. Amen. Let's give that stomach a break. You know, I mean, some people they say they fast because they want to lose weight. That's not a good reason, you know. But we, we fast for spiritual purposes. If you now lose weight while you're doing it, it's a good thing. Amen. Even doctors, medically, they've told us that it's a good thing. Sometimes when you just give your stomach a little rest, you know. And then, and then, but you remember, we're doing for spiritual purposes. Say amen. amen. May the Lord bless the uh, uh, bless His word today in Jesus' name. Amen. For those watching today, maybe you've not committed your life to Christ and you're not born again. Bible says, except a man is born again, they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I want to take this opportunity to just say a prayer with you. If you're watching online, you have never surrendered your heart to Jesus. Except a man is born again, he can never inherit the kingdom of God. You know, except a man is born of the water and of the spirit of God. You see, we're not Christian because we're born into a Christian family. You are not a Christian because you go to church. You are not a Christian because, you know, your, 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 your dad is a Christian. You're a Christian because you made, you've made a personal commitment. To follow Jesus. Bible says in Romans 10, 9 to 10, if you should confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, you will be saved. So I want to just say a prayer for those watching here right now, watching online, and you've never given your life to Christ. Today is your day. Amen. Praise God. So just bow down your head where you are and repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you this afternoon to surrender my heart to you. I repent of my sins. I believe you are the Son of God and the only way to God. Help me to live a holy life. I accept you as my Lord, as my Savior. I believe you died for me on the cross and I accept you to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If this is the first time that you said that prayer, please contact us and we will help you to grow in your spiritual life. Amen. And let me just say a prayer for you. Father, we thank you for that person who have just given their life to Christ. Father, we pray your blessing upon them. Father, we pray they will grow in the things of the Spirit. The enemy will not touch them. They will never go back to their vomit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause this afternoon.